Welcome to Behind the Scenes, Project Management at Siemens. In this podcast series, you are not going to hear project management methodologies, processes, or guidelines, or not even projects in particular. You are going to hear stories, personal experiences, and journeys of people behind the scenes, project managers and commercial project managers within Siemens from all around the world. I'm Daria Iran. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, Project Management at Siemens. In this episode, our guest is Lena Thiel. Hello, welcome Lena. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Daria. Thank you. I'm very, very good today. Very fine. Thanks. How are you? I'm good as well. Thank you. So why don't we start with introducing yourself? Tell us about your journey in Siemens and how you started your career and stuff. I started at Siemens six years ago as a working student in Vienna, in Austria, while I was still doing my master's. So there I started working for Siemens Mobility. And then after about one and a half years, I worked full time. And my decision was to go into the project management at that time. And I do not regret this decision at all. (laughs) So after the nearly four years now that I work full time and I started working for a metro project at Siemens Mobility Rolling Stock, always wanted to get to know more about project management. So at the time my master's was about to finish, I had the opportunity to continue working in the line for the procurement department. They offered me possible jobs in Vienna, but also in in Germany, in Erlangen. But I decided I do not want to stay in the line. I want to be in a project. So then I started working for one of the projects. And I think that's the best decision I've ever made. Why is this passion for project management? So when I was starting working full-time on the One Metro project, I joined at a very, very good time, I would say, start of the project, and I could experience everything from the first draft to the final component, let's say. So that was so fulfilling and exciting to experience everything from start actually till the end to the first train coming out or to be finished. So that was a very great experience at that time. Yeah, so most of the Siemens projects have an impact on the world we live in. So you are also mentioning to create that impact. How was it with you in this project and was this the inspiring part for you? Yes, so the first project was the metro trains for the city I lived in that time. Using the metro trains or building the metro trains I use every day to go to work, to go out for dinner, to come back home. So the metro trains in the city I live in right now at that time was something I will use, my friends will use, my family will use, and I was part of this project. After two years, I moved to Erlangen, to Germany, started working for another project, or also metro project. Or these trains were for the city of Munich. So that was also quite exciting because I've, I didn't know Munich that good. But um, I have a lot of friends living in Munich and they told me about the metro trains, what they think about them. I always got the, I would say, direct and unfiltered feedback, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> about the trains we are building <laughs> and what they think about them. So yes, it's something you do for your community or the world or the environment you live in, the region you're living in. And And it's very tangible, right? So you can see the result and the effect you created with your daily work. Exactly, exactly. So when I talk to friends I used to go to university with, and they're like in the consulting department, Are they working for something, I don't know, software? We always talk about, so what are we doing actually? What is the result of our work? I always say, well, I work for Siemens, Mobility, Rolling Stock, and the outcome of my work is a train I can use to go from A to B, to go from where I stand right now to the place I want to be. (laughs) So, and this is something which is very, very exciting and inspiring. 
Well, that's that's really cool. And you mentioned that you started as a working student uh, in Siemens. So how was your impression at that time and how does it change in time? Um, that's a good question, actually, because I can remember my very first day at Siemens. It was in May 2016 and I've never worked for a large company like Siemens. So I was very, I would say, naive, not very experienced, um, didn't know what to expect. And I came there the first day and that was why my at that time boss gave me a lot of stuff to read and he explained everything to me and I was overwhelmed by the size of this company and that was only Austria and only Siemens Mobility. So my first impression was absolutely overwhelming. I did not know what to do at all. So it took a little bit of time to get to know all like the processes and the rules and how to how do you communicate and how is everything working together for nearly the same goal we all have. But I know the first day I went out of the office, I was so packed with information that I was standing there waiting for the metro train, actually, um, <laughs> and and thought to myself or asked myself if I am able to do this job, even though it was only a working student job. But I was I was a bit um, overwhelmed, maybe a little bit afraid if that's not one or two numbers too big for me. <laughs> and right now, after I worked there for six years right now, and I've, I've known Vienna, I've known Erlangen, Munich, and now I think, yeah, it was fine. I, I found myself there and yeah. You know, you're at the start of your career and it's a very huge organization, as you mentioned, with very experienced people. And how was it for you? I've made the experience that you can do a lot at Siemens. If you know what you want to do, they offer you a lot of possibilities. But one thing I've learned very early is that you always need someone who supports you to fulfill your, I would say, dreams. So because you need some kind of a mentor or mm -hmm. someone who's like believing in you that you can do it and pushes you. And if you know what you want to do and you have the support from at least someone, you have a lot of possibilities. So you're your... talking about mentors or sponsors, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, how do you reach to those in Siemens? It was not that I was looking for role models or mentors. It just came automatically to me. So my first project manager, He was at the first uh, or in the, in, the, in the beginning, he was quite skeptical because I was, I don't know, 26, 25 years old, mm -hmm. had no experience. But now I was responsible for the complete external and at that time also internal procurement for the metro trains. And he was quite skeptical. And I think he wanted to test me mm -hmm. in the beginning. So I had, a, I would say, quite hard time at the beginning, not having the trust from the project manager. But um, I think we aligned very very fast we got to know each other very very fast and he became for me a role model the way he managed his project the way he communicated with all the team members with the customer also mm -hmm. with our internal management but he was still in a kind of a balance so he had his focus on several topics at different times but he never lost his focus on his project team on on the customer so i was always very inspired by him how he could manage his time his resources and even though i left the project Project. I think it's now two years ago. We are still in contact. So he's always the person I ask for advice, experience. So he's kind of a role model for me. I think that's the great part for within Siemens that you can find really very experienced people who are also willing to support young talents, young people who are at the beginning of their career and teach them and support them and guide them. And I think this is great. And what I think is that project management is one of the roles that you can really learn a lot of things because you have many challenges and you have many different stakeholders and so on. So there is a quite big learning curve in here. How did it help you to grow uh, in your career and also as a person? Okay, I think the biggest learning curve was when I decided to move from Vienna to Erlangen and start a new job in a new project and having the complete responsibility for one of the sub project within this very big 
project and having the empowerment to decide on my own to have the interface with the customer, to have the interface with the suppliers, and to have also the interface with the management and with a complete team. That was quite different to my first full-time job in Vienna. There it was interface to the suppliers, interface to the project team, but not to the customer and not to the management. So this was the first time I was empowered and responsible for a whole sub-project by myself. And it was a quite difficult sub-project, I would say. We were at a very critical point in the project. We had a claim. We had also the contractual um, obligation to our customer. And we were faced with a lot of challenges at that time. I was new in the project. I did not know how everything worked. So having this big challenge and um, trying to manage everything at the same time and experience also that it not always work the way you expect it or planned it to work out. I think this is the, I would say the biggest learning curve for me that it's okay to not to fail, but it's okay that you fail and continue to work on it. The first year in Germany was, I think, the biggest experience or the the experience with the biggest learning curve Mm -hmm. for me. Because after that, I had the opportunity to be a project manager for a bid project. So first I was So it means you create the offer, you prepare the offer, you don't execute the project. Exactly. First I was always in execution and then I had the opportunity to be the project manager for a bid project. And yeah, that was for me a very big opportunity. And I did not expect to be or to get this role offered. So I said yes <laughs> straight away. And the experience I gained um, before with all these challenges and, and critical situations I already had made it more easy for me to succeed in the in the role as a bid project manager. Even though the learning curve was quite high because I've never been in a bid phase before, mm. I just could use the experience I already made with communicating with the uh, management to communicate with the team or to have a project team working for kind of my project. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty, pretty good that I already gained this experience and mm-hmm. to use it then. So you have the chance to use the experience and lessons learned from your execution of the previous project and integrated them into the new big project. And I think that's great to have, you know, to get trusted and to have the freedom and make decisions on your own in your responsibility. And how does this create self-confidence in you or how does it affect your growth? So being trusted or being empowered. So I start with the self-confidence boost I got. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. When we won the BIT project, my colleague, the commercial project manager and I, we did a lessons learned with our project team to have a kind of a retrospective about the last month. And we wanted to get feedback from them, how our team who worked on this bit full time, actually, and under a lot of pressure to get the feedback from them, how they felt during the time how they experienced the cooperation with us, the collaboration with us. And when we did this lessons learned, I was a little bit nervous because it was my first project as a project manager. The first time I had the full responsibility for the result, for the outcome. The first time I had team members who were waiting for my decision and who would follow my decision. So I was very, very nervous about the feedback I would get. And the feedback was really positive and honest. And to get the feedback from the people you were working with under pressure, even though we had very, I would say, harsh discussions sometimes, but to get the positive feedback from them, how they felt during the time I was the project manager gave me the, I would say, ultimate confidence boost and it the was satisfaction not, maybe <laughs> yes satisfaction also it was not it was not the the feedback from the management like well done or good job it was okay nice to read nice to hear but for me it was more the 
first the success that we together won the project, but also, but the most important thing for me was the feedback from the team members. Mm. So I remember when we talked before, you talk about motivating people towards the same goal, but also keep in mind to connect to their personal needs. This was something that I really liked when I hear it from you. How do you motivate people and also towards the goal? So it's a really you know, limited time, very ambitious goal that you have. But on the other hand, still keep in mind their personal needs, interests and bringing them together. Yeah. So what I experienced pretty early when I was not in the role as a project manager was always that there are project managers or line managers who only want the result at a specific time and they do not care about your, I would say, other duties you have in your life. When I was a working student, I had university, I had exams to write, and um, I had one boss who was always like, okay, you manage your time by yourself. I want the result on that specific day. Um, you can do or do the, the task how you and when you want to do it. And then there were some line managers or project managers who did not care about it. And if you are in that position that you do not have the freedom and flexibility, I think the result of your uh, work is not the same as the result would be if you could do it in your own pace and, mm. and, and, when you feel comfortable. So that was one thing I learned very early and I wanted to keep in mind and also give to my team members that whenever they have, I would say, personal issues or they have, I know that they're not working only for my project, but for several projects, I do not want to work under, under pressure with them. I want to find a way with them how we can solve it together. So I had during the bid project phase, I had colleagues. I knew they were working for like two or three other, other projects. And I knew that they were under pressure the whole time. So I talked to them and asked them, how can we solve this issue together? What can I do for you that you can focus on my project right now? I think you as a project manager should always consider that your team colleagues are not only working for you and how to motivate them to um, always consider that or keeping in mind that your project, what you are working for and which is your biggest goal is not always their biggest goal. They have different goals and different interests. And just by talking to them and finding out what is their goal interest and trying to find out why are they working for, for Siemens or for this department is, I think, quite important to, to get to know them and to get them on the path you want them. I've always tried to building also a team so that we have the team feeling quite early in the project. So I didn't want that everyone just only talks to me. I wanted to talk together and always get all information to everyone so that everyone feels more connected to the project, feels more connected to the team. And then I think the motivation comes by itself to have it on a regular basis, to, to talk to them on a regular basis and to not keep information from them so that they all feel they're part of it, they are connected and they're all working for the same project or result. Wow, that's impressive. I hear a lot of things here, you know, caring about the team, keeping in mind their also personal needs and goals and everything. So that's great. And um, so in projects, there are many dimensions that you need to take care of. So the financials, the timing, people and so on. So what does it take to be a good project manager for you? You already gave some of the hints, but, you know, in, in total, when you think in the all dimensions, so in all dimensions, what I experienced pretty early is that you should not focus on the one dimension you are good at. I always had in mind that I need to know every single dimension and I need to know what every single team member is doing and working on. What are their problems and what are their needs? I always wanted to know and to learn what are they doing and what is their main or are their main problems and, and needs. I think to have this balance of all these dimensions with you is the key for success, actually. What is the most fun part for you? 
<laughs> the most fun <laughs> part is I would say every time you get positive feedback from the customer, actually, really good feeling is when you see that the customer is happy what you're doing with your project. It's, it's maybe not the funniest, but it's the best. And when I started as a bit project manager, the first thing was I bonded with the commercial project manager and we had a very, very tough time during the bit phase, but he was the first person I talked to in the morning and the last person I talked to in the evening <laughs> sometimes. It was it was quite funny. And as we were very, very close connected, we had a lot of fun together. We always motivated each other and we had a lot of laughs, even though we had very stressful nights sometimes and we were at the end of our of our resources sometimes. We never kept stop motivating us. We always try to make the best out of it. And what we also tried to do is to keep this positiveness to the team. Mm, this positive attitude or the attitude, yes. atmosphere, let's say. That's, that's exactly. cool. If you go back to your time as a working student and you meet your young self, <laughs> what would you advise to her? Right now, I would say I would not do anything different. I made the decision to work in the project management environment pretty early because I knew that something I want to do. And I think it was more or less the first time I really felt that I want to do this. You know, when you go to school, you just go to school because you have to go to school. <laughs> And afterwards, you study something, but it's maybe you decide what you want to study and you do this. But for me, it was like nothing, nothing I really, really wanted to study. It was fine for me. I studied it and it was quite interesting and it was fun, but it was nothing I, I really pursued from the very first day. It was just something I did and I was mm -hmm. happy when it was over, actually. <laughs> And when I started working for Siemens as a working student and uh, getting to know how everything works and what kind of opportunities there were, I was, from the very first beginning, I was interested in the project management. And when I made the decision, I knew I wanted to grow in this environment and I want to become a project manager and I want to become at some point a senior project manager. And I want to uh, do this certification, actually. And so I think every, every single decision I did for my career was the right decision to be right there where I am. And it's not that far where I went in the last six years, but I know that I will go further and I will someday be a senior project manager, hopefully. So I would say to my younger self, just do it right. Again, like you already did. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, exactly, exactly. I, I'm sure as well you'll be a senior project manager one day with this passion and with this enthusiasm. Thank you very much for joining us today. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, thank thank you. you very much, Lena. Thank you, Daria. Thanks. Thank you for listening. I'm Daria Iran. This podcast is a production of Siemens. If you would like to explore our world, please visit Siemens.com. <laughs>